Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dennis Wilborn with uh, from Active Trend Traders, and um, Dave Grandy is on. David Grandy is on the line with us uh, with from All About Trends. How are you doing today, Dave? I'm doing really well. How are you doing? No screen sharing. Hold on a second, guys. Just let. Thank you for. Re How about now? Okay. Just have to make sure you push all the right buttons and buttons on the control panel on this side, Dave. That's what it is. And so, well, we've had some excitement in the market this week, yes? Uh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it'll be kind of interesting to see what's going to be taking place so going into next week. Um, and I know that you guys have had some good, that, you know, trade you guys did on Google was just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, jumping in, jumping out. I guess you closed totally out of that trade on Google? Yeah, we just we just uh, popped out of it at the open, and that makes a, that makes a lot of sense. And so, yeah, I was estimating you probably I think I figured you figured you picked up about twenty one or twenty two dollars on the trade. Right. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I've been um, waiting. Um, um, I'm not liking how the market's looking longer term, or maybe getting ready to go into the summer doldrums, and so. Um, I'm kind of just waiting for it to prove itself, and I'll show you some charts here shortly that talk about uh, directly about that. So let's get going. And folks, if you're going to be putting in a, a stock for us to review a little bit later, please, um, please uh, um, include the stock ticker. And if you're already long the stock or just looking to go long or, or that type of thing. Uh, it it helps us with our review process a little bit, and I'll stretch out the ex the um, the question board so I can see when you guys do your input. I want to remind everybody that today's material is for training purposes only, and uh, I encourage all traders to first tr paper trade any new method prior to the risk of personal capital. So, I went searching. Dave, because I'm torn at this particular moment regarding uh, um, the way the market's going to wind up and, and go uh, in the short term, at least between now and, let's say, the end of September. So I just wanted to post this little uh, uh, picture up here. How do you ride a bear? The same way you do, a, you ride a bull in the direction it's going. And... Uh, that's something I think we all, all need to remember <laughs> as uh, uh, regardless what we're trading is is go with the direction that the price action's taking you and look for the patterns, look for the signs. Uh, last week, uh, we were anticipating some weakness. We talked about uh, the market pulling back this week and working out because it was very well uh, overcooked, overextended to the upside. And we are anticipating some, some, uh, if not breakdown, at least uh, getting rid of the uh, uh, the over exuberance in the, in the market. We got that this week, um, but the price action, from my perspective, just from a technical standpoint, uh, these huge one day swings back and forth. Um, I stick that in my back pocket and to give not to give me con over concern, but just to be aware of it. It is not the action of a real healthy market. As you can see in the S and P this week, uh, the last two days we went from resist. We started at resistance, well, fell down hard to support, and back up to resistance all in two days. Uh, ditto on the Nasdaq. Ditto on the Russell. Uh, except the Russell is, was a lot weaker, and today's candle on the Russell was a bullish engulfing on a daily chart. So that may uh, indicate that we, we have some upside with the Russell, but when we get to the individual chart, we'll get to see that a little closer. Outside influences on the market, as we know that the, the, the market has been reacting a lot to news. It's been, you know, up, down, what's going on in the Middle East, and... and um, uh, what's going on in Germany? What's going on in the UK? What's going on with the pigs? What's going on here at home on the on the border? Uh, so I, I have to say this weekend, you know, no no airplanes were shot down, uh, airliners were shot down, and and uh, 
the, the big invasion of, the, uh, of Gaza was somewhat held off, although Israel is behind the lines there taking care of business. But we, we basically, it was quite on the Western Front. We'll see what the weekend brings, because news over the weekend, uh, as we've seen here lately, uh, has driven the market. The news has really driven the market either up and down dramatic, up or down dramatically. So let's get started here. Uh, I like this chart from the aspect, and those of you who uh, tune into the midweek market uh, sanity check training session that we do with the active trend traders are familiar with this chart. And what this chart is is a chart of, of uh, stocks in the NYSE that are the percent of stocks above their 20-day moving average. And um, it has definitely works, tends to work well when we get over in this, this extended area down here below 25. And we breached that slightly yesterday and closed just below 25, and we get a rebound today. In the past months, whenever you can go and check about, you know, February 5th, we've got our rebound. February 5th on this, uh, this indicator, it drops down into this lower reversal zone, reverses up, and this was an indication that the, the pullback was over and the S&P was going on a new tear. Same thing for mid-April. This is about April 15th. Uh, we get a bounce up, a little bit of what I call this is the indecision zone or the, the, the um, where the market can't make up its mind exactly what it wants to do. This is a, a dangerous zone for us as traders to be trading in. Um, are there any charts shown? Yes, there are. Can you, uh, are the charts shown up, guys? Just flash me a, a hand if you can see this uh, percent. Okay. Okay, um, Roderick, yeah, they are showing up. Thank you, guys. Got it. Um, anyway, this churn zone uh, can really hammer you. If you remember from about April 15th, in the, in the S&P, things were really going great. Uh, it was going great guns to the upside. But the uh, NASDAQ and the Russell was really struggling during this time. It was tough and challenged to find a... Uh, 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 to get a sustained up move in that period. So let's take a look at the charts themselves. But I use this as a gauge. And as I said, we, we were down in the lower reversal on Thursday. We have rebounded off of that. If we get into one of these confluence where we're bouncing between 50 and 25, that can be a very high churn area. Uh, that can be challenging to, um, uh, to trade in. We'll take a look at the charts before we go to the Russell. On the right-hand side is a weekly chart. On the left-hand side is the um, on the left-hand side is the daily chart. The right-hand side is the weekly chart. And um, as we can see, we basically this week have gone up into a resistance area on the S and P. And now, yesterday, we turned down fairly hard off. That was a significant, you know, really nice and really good sell-off. Broke the short-term trend line. But then today, it, we get a slight gap up on the, on the S&P, and it moves on up here to the resistance, back to the resistance level. Uh, the thing that's going to tell us what's going on next week is do we go break out from the resistance level, or does resistance hold and turn us back down? Um, in any type of topping type process, what you get is these return trips to the moving averages that eventually have the moving averages turning over and, and rounding down. And so we're looking, I'm looking for that kind of action to happen, although we could bounce right through this and head right, head right on up. But we went from support to resistance and almost made a complete round trip in two days. On the uh, weekly chart on this, what I'm checking out and what I'm looking at is we had a bearish Harami last week. That is still in effect. 
And so until that is voided by a break above this price level, that bearish harami is still in effect for the S&P. Uh, this week we get a candle that is close to being a hanging man. Both of those signals are short, at least short-term bearish. Uh, the NASDAQ has been a little bit weaker than the S&P. As you can see, it, it, it was uh, hitting resistance here a little bit lower than uh, the S&P on a, on a movement-wise basis. But again, it does a very similar type uh, action. Falls down this week on Thursday, but then bounces up today. Did take out the low of today, or the high of today, so it did break above the, the low of the high day, high of the low day, excuse me. And uh, we'll again see what happens. The big tell will be what happens if it gets back up into this resistance area. If it puts, starts putting a, a lot of small body candle like this doji or this spinning top, we may get uh, a, a test of the resistance area with a turn back down. Uh, again, if it breaks on through, we've got another resistance level up here. And... Um, we're just going to have to play it by ear. Those are kind of our, our, our lines of demarcation. And if we do get a, a, a turn back down, we'll, if we break through this 4350 level to the downside, then our next point, our target would potentially be the 50-day moving average, which is sloping upward at this time. And price action may start attacking that to get it to bend over and roll over, or to roll over. Russell. Russell, not crut, Russell. Uh, Russell had a really challenging week, as much of you, many of you know. It appeared as if we were going to try to get a bounce off the 50-day moving average. That fell through yesterday, and it dropped below the 200. But today we get a really nice rebound. Guess where to? Right back into a resistance zone at the 50-day moving average. Um, the uh, But this candle today is a bearish engulfing candle, which if it fulfills, uh, that is typically a, 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 well, it's a bullish, let's say bearish, it's a bullish engulfing pattern. Pattern. If it fulfills, it should take us on up. The question will be is what happens when it gets to the 20? Will it start putting a bunch of small bodies in decisive candles showing that, hey, I've reached as hard as I, this is, this in reality, today's movement was a start of a relief rally, but not really a rally to take it back up to new highs. So those are some of the things that are going through my mind uh, as we look at these individual uh, uh, these individual uh, uh, pattern uh, patterns on the weekly chart, um, the um, that, the composite and the correction the Russell is definitely shown. We know where the strong support is now. We know where the uh, uh, resistance is. And again, we would find other areas of resistance if we move back up right at the bottom base of all these candles going up and anywhere around the midsection here of this large, large um, um, bearish candle here. One thing that is very interesting, if we wanted to kind of get a picture of this, if we drew a, a trend line just straight across to let me get rid of those, there we go. We draw a trend line just straight across here about the midsection of this candle. That's where we'd anticipate running into resistance. And if we draw that over here, as you can see, it is in a resistance zone as it popped up here on this uh, the uh, daily chart. And so anywhere in that area would be a great area to look for uh, uh, for running into the resistance and to see if we can push our way through that, or will, will that be the place where we roll over again? If we take a retracement line of the move, isn't it interesting? 
here was the move from low to high on a, on a Fibonacci. We came down right into the very bottom of the magic fib box that I always talk about, and we get a rebound directly off that. So, um, so Dave, that's about it for the the um, indices. Uh, good strong move today, but uh, it's going to take a little bit of time to find out whether the strong move leads to something significant or if it's going to lead to uh, just uh, a short re relief rally uh, followed by uh, some more downside. Yeah, it's definitely um, a, you know an interesting position for for me. I've always erred on the side of a, what are what are stocks doing, what, what are leading stocks doing, um, to kind of guide me when the market's kind of in a um, push me pull me mode. Yeah. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of structure on the long side. Yeah. And I'm not seeing a whole lot of structure on the short side. Now that doesn't mean that you know the market's going to go off to the races, but that's what the charts are telling me. I have to work hard to find something on the short side. I don't have to work really hard to find stuff on the long side. Yeah. Well, that that's one of the things that I look at also. I know that, you know, let me go back to just the chart on the Russell real quick. Is to me a big significant one, Dave, is where if I get a cross, a bearish cross over here, like I've got the 8 crossing below the, below the 20, and uh, and I've got a little bit of the, the uh, 50 days start to roll back, roll, you know, kind of flatten out, roll over. Um, there's nothing wrong with taking a trade if this b bullish engulfing fulfills for me. But I, I would say, you know, it, it makes it a little bit easier to target shoot for profits. Because when it starts hitting some of these other zones, that's where you want to be kind of pulling back. But as you guys and, and I believe in also, individual stocks don't necessarily have to follow this pattern. Uh, there are stocks out there, like you guys say, you know, uh, it's a it's a market made up of stocks and not so much a stock market. So, anyway, you ready to talk about some of those winners? I am. Okay. I am. So, yeah, yesterday I did a, a an hour-long webinar for the Trader, Traders Expo, and um, I went through all the different patterns that we use, and I was really having a hard time. I didn't have much to show on the short side. Um, I had lots to talk about on the long side. So, um, but you know, that can change in a moment's notice. So you you just never know. But that's what we're seeing right now. So I just wanted to start off today a little bit about what do we do when we have days like yesterday, where you have things that are out of your control that are happening around the world, um, and and the impacts on the market and the fear and how do you, how do we handle that? And um, for us, there's it's all about just being in a position where that doesn't matter so much because of the trading plan that you have. Um, there's four ways that we, four things that we incorporate into our trading plan that help us minimize our risk to event days like yesterday happening. First off, we don't want to ever chase stocks. We're not buying stocks as they're breaking new highs. We're buying stocks that are making technical moves after they pull back to areas of support. Um, secondly, we practice trade size risk management. We're not going and plumping in 20% or, or more of our portfolio in any one position. Um, we have, we're rarely, we're, we're more than 50% invested. We have no more than 5 to 7% of our portfolio invested in any one position. Um, and that really makes us, you know, sleep well at night because even if we were to, if let's say you put 5% of your uh, portfolio in one position and you lose 10 percent well the overall impact to your portfolio is half a percent so you know that allows us to really trade objectively in and out of stocks without really having to the fear of well what if I'm wrong here um, you know because I'm 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 practicing trade size risk management second a third we don't really uh, we try very hard not to get emotional we're just doing what the charts tell us to do we we buy when the charts tell us to buy we sell when the charts tell us to sell, and it's we, we try not to think about it and, and trade because of something we see on TV or, or uh, what we think or what we fear might happen. Uh, and then finally, we pay attention to support zones. Um, you know, we, there's multiple ways, multiple areas of support. 
we talk about trend lines almost every week on this webinar. Um, there's lateral support. Dennis, you're the moving average king. So there's all kinds of uh, support areas that, that we can use um, when we're um, analyzing whether we should get into a position or stay into a position. So um, just to quickly review our trading plan, uh, we don't chase stocks. We let them come to us. It's really simple. We just buy support and we sell resistance. And we short resist resistance and we cover at support. Um, it's, that's, it's really that simple. And we just do what the charts tell us to do. Um, so, and this is why. And here's some, I'm just going to go through some recent stocks that have, have, have broken out into new highs. Um, and you can see most breakouts will come back and retest an area that used to be resistance, and which should now act as support. It's very, very common for that to happen. <clears throat> and we prefer to let breakouts prove themselves to us by coming back and retesting support and then moving higher before we, we jump in. And by doing that, we're also buying much closer to support. So if you know, if we, if we buy here on the break of the pink line, well, we're, we've got support here at a green trend line. We've got support at the 50-day moving average. So if the stock were to go against us, it's only going to be a point or so below our buy point where we're going to get stopped out. That's a lot better than buying it after it's made a 20% move here as it's breaking into new high with no support anywhere near in sight. Um, Arius, Cavium, uh, Dana Holding, White Wave Foods, and they've all had, had nice breakouts, made you feel good for a week or two, and then came back and retested areas of support. Uh, and I'm not knocking buying breakouts. That's a very viable strategy. It's a, you know, a great strategy. There's just different risks associated with it, different uh, rules associated. We would just prefer to buy closer to support um, than, than buy breakouts. And, you know, when we have a day like we had yesterday, you know, these support levels typically, if the stock's going to do what it's going to do, these support levels are going to hold. Whereas if they're already super extended, uh, you know, we're going to be really feeling a lot of pain on days like yesterday. So just to summarize, breakouts versus pullbacks, again, we're buy, by buying pullbacks, we're buying closer to support. We're buying on a technical event as the stock's clearing the, the mini downtrend. We're selling on a technical event as it breaks support versus selling just because it's 8% below our buy point. Um, our stop is usually just a few percentage points away. So our risk is really minimal with significant upside potential. And, then see, and the risk is even more minimal when you use proper trade size risk management. Um, so that, with all that being said, there's absolutely no reason for us to go out and chase stocks. And, and we are at a point where you know, we don't really care if the market's going up or going down. All we're doing is looking for patterns and trading those patterns. And right now we see a lot more patterns on the long side than, than we do the short side. Does that mean the market's going to go up? I don't know. It's kind of like I, I don't know, I don't care. All I care about is what's happening with these patterns and are they triggering trades or not and are those trades working out? That's all I care about. Um, and that's that's our plan. We're, we're trading our... Uh, we're trading our, uh, we're planning our trades and trading our plan. Okay, so um, going back into the, the stuff we talk about every week, three things you need to know, uptrends and how to trade them, downtrends and how to trade them, changes in trends. Well, there's not a whole lot of downtrend patterns and there's not a lot happening on the change in trend patterns yet, although we're starting to see some stocks possibly change their trend from up to down, but not to the point where I can really talk about them at this point. So it's really all about uptrends. And um, pullback off highs pattern is, is the, really the pattern you need to know in uptrending markets and uptrending stocks. Stocks, we're looking for stocks and confirmed uptrends above the 50-day moving average that have pulled back in an orderly manner to areas of support. Um, super microcomputer uh, triggered a trade today. Uh, this is, uh, you know, like those five stocks I showed you at the beginning here. This is a breakout, and it's consolidated its gains back towards area of support from the prior breakout as well as the 50-day moving average and it made a move, a nice move higher today, um, clearing the, um, the downtrend channel that it's been in. So we took that trade because you know, it triggered the trade. You know, we just charged telling us to buy, so we, we took a position in it. Um, 
This is Akamea. It's uh, setting up um, a really nice coupled handle uh, here. So the traditional buy point would be, I don't know, 62 and change. Um, but for us, it's got a nice pullback off highs here um, and gives us an, an alternative entry point, a break above the pink line here. Again, it's, you know, when that happens, we're going to be buying it close to support here at the blue line and the 50-day moving average versus up here where support's still going to be a good distance away. So we're just waiting for that one to uh, to trigger. It has earnings coming up in a couple weeks, perhaps that, that'll be the event, but I, I suspect it'll probably launch before earnings because it's, it's getting pretty tight here where it's going to be make or break. It's either going to break or it's going to break support and no longer be a viable pattern. One of the two is going to happen you know, next week probably. So this is definitely high on our list. Um, so, and then we have earnings season full swing. So what do we do with earnings season? Well, um, most of the time we don't trade in and out of earnings. However, there are times where there are patterns that are clearly identified before earnings and sometimes it's worth taking a shot at that. Um, so this is Google. Um, you can see Google's trading a nice overall uptrend. Um, we talked about Google a few weeks ago on, on this webinar, maybe a couple months ago actually, when it, when it was in a downtrend and then it made this change in trend pattern. It had formed a double bottom, it had a first thrust up and then it pulled back to trend channel support and then set a, a higher low and then took off. And I think Dennis, you were talking about that in your midday update today. Um, the importance of having these two confirmations where you've got um, the first thrust up, okay, it's changing its trend from, it's no longer, it just broke its downtrend, but now let's wait for it to pull back and set a higher low and then take off. Right on. And that's exactly what we saw with Google. That's what we, we traded that um, a couple months ago. And then you can see now it's just in a, I can't get my mouse work, an overall uptrend here. And going into earnings, it just pulled back towards trend channel support. So we bought it ahead of earnings and we sold it at the, at the open today, it was you know a nice 19 point or so, 20 point um, point gain for us. Now this is a, a separate service that we have called Earnings Call, which does it looks for setups just like this, and um, just trades in and out of earnings reports. But the, the point I'm trying to make is the patterns are the patterns, and it's the same you know whether you're doing um, you're buying and holding or you're just swing training trading or you're um, trying to take advantage of earnings volatility. It's it's just, you know, what are the patterns? What are the charts telling you to do? And and when the chart's telling you to buy, we buy. And when it's telling you to sell, we sell. And that really um, makes it easy. Um, it makes it days like yesterday much easier to handle because we're not, we're not emotionally connected to any of this. Uh, we're just doing what the charts tell us to do. We have proper trade size risk management. We're not mortgaging the house on this. And, uh, you know, we just let the charts do what they're going to do. So um, now we have a lot of great setups on our watches, probably more than our watches is longer than it's ever been. Um, so it, this is really a great time to to get in and take advantage of this. and. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to take advantage of these trades, and so we're going to do uh, the webinar live today, obviously, and we're going to do it again live next week. But then I, I really want to really zero in on some of these great setups we have. Um, so we're going to continue to do the webinars, but they'll be recorded. They won't be live in the in the month of August, and then following uh, Labor Day weekend, we'll we'll resume doing them live again. So if if you've ever if you're not already um, taking advantage of our combo subscription this week and next week are your weeks to do it because we're not going to be <coughs> excuse me we're not going to be offering it in August hang on a second we're not going to offer it in August and we're uh, we're not sure what we're going to do once we resume in Labor Day so um, anyway we will still be doing the webinars they will but they won't be live. They'll be recorded. We'll send you out emails so you can um, go and access them. Access them. And if you want to take advantage of this comment subscription, this is the time to do it because um, we're not sure we're going to offer it again. And we have tremendously good-looking setups that we can take advantage of right away. Um, so 
you know, it's not like you're going to sign up and then have to wait a while here. There's a lot of good, good structure out there, and we're going to be really focused on making the most of it. And that's about it, Dennis. David, thanks a lot. Uh, awesome. i got a couple of questions for you. One question is, uh, is there a link to the webinar, the webinar seminar that you did for um, the Trader Expo? I am working on getting that, and we're going to put it on our website. So um, just keep checking our website. I hope to have that later today or over the weekend and get that up there. Okay. Then secondly, if somebody is already a subscriber to um, the services, do you offer some kind of a discount for the earnings, uh, excuse me, report special? Um, well, it's it's the earnings is for all existing subscribers. It's the same price for all existing subscribers. Okay. Um, no matter, um, so it's it's forty nine ninety nine per quarter. So it's it works out for to like fifteen bucks a month or so. so okay. Um, we think it's pretty pretty reasonable. And then, um, folks, if you have a, a a question specifically for David, especially about whether you got an alert or didn't get an alert from his service. Uh, Please email him directly because uh, with the webinar, he doesn't see the comments that everybody's making. Um, and so uh, that's the best way to, to get his attention on that kind of stuff. There were a couple of questions, David, on the, uh, uh, I think the, the uh, oh, the one, the stock of trigger today, the SMCI. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's awesome. We, so we have we have our main service, and we have two separate services. We have earnings call, and then we have another service called Dash for Cash, which is it's more short term um, trading. It's really designed for folks that have smaller account balances who want to quickly build up that account balance so they can do more with our core service. Um, so it's just you know getting. We take a trade, we get in, we get a point or two, and we move on real quick, in and out okay. um, gains. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that. Yeah, the, well, the question, well, one of the questions was, uh, uh, one of the, one of the uh, members uh, didn't think they got the, the uh, alert from you guys on SMCI. And anyway... Just, just one. Yeah. So if you if you're a subscriber to our Dash service, you would have got the alert. It's it's it's. Oh, okay. So did, bucks, it's it's ten bucks a month extra on top of our regular service. Okay, I got gotcha. you. So in other words, it only went out to your Dash folks. Correct. Gotcha. Correct. Yeah. I, I'm slow, but I, once I do pick up on things, I, it's okay. <laughs> so. Uh, and so one other person just asked, uh, can they sign up for the earnings call without a regular subscription? And um, again, I would, you know, I would suggest I'll throw that question out there, Dave. But any specific questions like that could be directed directed at you via your email. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Just have them email me, and we'll we'll uh, work that out. No okay. And so. Uh, yeah, David. Uh, as David indicated, this will be the the well. This week and next week will be the last uh, of the the live uh, market stock talk webinars for, until after Labor Day, and so we've got another week of the combo uh, offering. I want to thank everybody for you know who, who's jumped on board on that, who recognizes the value. I've had several subscribers come back and say that that is that for both of those. That is well, well, well underpriced uh, for the value that is received. And um, the, the other part, uh, David, is we don't know if we're going to be continuing that at the current level. And as we discussed later, if you have already taken advantage of that, those that subscription rate will continue on uh, forever. So you don't have to worry about it being bumped up. Um, uh, right, exactly. We, you know, it's it's as good as long as you manage subscriber. We're never going to increase the price on you. Um, so, if if you want it at this rate, this is the time to get it. That's right. So, okay, uh, let's let's um, move back over here. Um, just want to kind of remind everybody, uh, David Harlan and myself. We do kind of we do a little bit of the same thing, but because of our own because of our own technical background. Uh, we trade two different systems uh, that look at 
some of the same stocks, but some of the stocks are different. And with the active trend trading system, you know, we trade it in any market condition. We show you what to trade, when uh, to enter, when to exit, what strategies to use to minimize risk and maximize profits. And I know that uh, David and Harlan are both very big on that aspect. So am I. Um, the, uh, uh, that minimizing risk is just huge, especially when the, the market kind of starts to get wonky. And secondly, uh, I like the system to be able to, to tell you what to expect based on history of the system. For um, uh, Dave, I know like you got well, I know we were talking last uh, month when we closed off June. Between your service and our service, the, you know, we had identified trading opportunities that to the tune of about $10,000 in profit. I know you guys are well above that now. Uh, here's where we're sitting with the active trend trading system through this point in July. We're up 2166, but since the first of June, we're up nine, not over nine thousand uh, dollars of trades that have been closed with the profits taken off the table. Here's the most recent. Uh, we closed a couple of trade or a trade today, um, and then we've also introduced a, a new where we're just doing a speculative type trade on TNA, um, and we're working on that. And so, Dave, um, so I know you guys are plus, have plus this up also. So what, how, where are we sitting at between both services, uh, profits taken off the table to date since June? Oh, gee, you know, I, I don't know the total off my top of my head, but it's got to be well over 15000 Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's in that neighborhood. I don't know the exact amount. Yeah, so, okay. Okay. Um, and you can check this out when the webinar is, is posted and the recording is ready. And this is some of the basic uh, subscription aspects of a full subscription on, on active trend trading. And then both Dave and I would love to present uh, to your group, if you have a, a, a trading group, and we can either come directly and do a live uh, presentation uh, or if you know you're not in the Bay Area, we'd love to to to, to you know tap in via webinar, and so um, uh, we would love doing that because both one thing David and I have in common, and Harlan too, is we love to talk about stocks and we love to talk about trading. Isn't that right, Dave? Absolutely. That's why we started doing this. <laughs> and so, um, so if you do. You know, please drop us a note or we just set it up and, and uh, we're available almost any time except I am not available on the first Saturday of every month and I'm not available on Sundays. Um, here's just a reminder of where you can find the combo link on uh, my YouTube channel, Market Tech Talk. And then... That kind of concludes the overall for today, folks. Um, any questions about what's been presented so far? Oh, David, I do have one thing for you. Yeah. I have to take you to Hawaii. Okay. Okay. Because I just say yes when someone says that. Okay. Be <laughs> because the way you say, you know, you had AKAM up there earlier. It's right. Oh, it's Akamai. Ah. Ah, okay. I just, you know, got to give